Hey everybody, how's it going and welcome to the channel. My name is Dare and in today's video I'm going to show you how to set up your very own 7 days to die 1.0 server. And this video is sponsored by Gporo. So, if you use the link in the description you'll get 10% off your server. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to the Gporo website. We're going to click rent a server. Here you'll be given a selection of games. You'll probably see seven days to die up there, but if not, you can put it in there and or see it in the bottom here. For the purpose of this one, I'll just click here. Now for this one, you can choose how many slots you want or create your own configuration. I always do the, uh, usually like 10 slots, 30 days, things like that, pretty good. Select where your server is, click order now. Here will give you your payment options, just click which one you prefer. Once that's done, it'll take about a minute or two to activate, as you can see at the top right. It'll update your server with a big progress bar showing. And then once that's done, which we'll skip to, and that will say load your server up. So here you'll have your IP, your web dashboard, how many players are on your server, how to seven days to die. So this will give you some guides on like maybe whatever you need if you're stuck on anything. And also for the purpose of this video, please make sure your server is stopped in case you've already started it. In this area of the status area here, you'll see your game server load, your access data. This is usually for modding and whatnot. And then your game server files. If at any point you're having issues, verify your game server files here on the server. Let's move over to basic settings. This is where we will edit everything about our server and get it ready for setup. So the first thing we're going to do is the server name and get that straight away for their server. Like so. Then you have your branch. Now you can choose which version of the game you wish to play on. I always say put it on the public latest version unless you I know what you're doing. The game name, make sure you give this something different, like World 1 D. You know, um, do not use any special characters or anything like that. The max uh, player count, I'd put it to 10. Your password, so if you want to have a password for Telnet, this is where you would put it. I'm going to leave it blank because I want other people to join the server. Server visibility, you can have not listed or public. Not listed means it will not show up on the server list, so make sure if you cannot see your server, it is set to public. The region, make sure you choose your correct region for your server. The language, you can change the language from English to German. The server password, now this is like to determine if well or not people can get into the server as well. So your telnet, is your password of your server so like your telnet password and then your server password here is your server description so um i'll just leave it as a seven days to die one you can change that to whatever you want your login confirmation text if the set the user will see them if a set user will see a message when they join the server before continuing so for example do you want a welcome message I don't want that either. Server website URL. So do you want to have like a website for your thing? So you could have like the Dare website or if you wanted, um, or you could link it to the G portal one, yada, yada, yada. Skip that. Game mode, keep it as game mode survival unless you have a way to change that. Um, the world size gen, um, you can, there is a way of changing the seeds, but I would just leave it as it is unless you know a good seed. With that, there are a lot of threads, forums, websites that give you different seeds for your server. Just be careful which one you put in. You don't want to put one in that is completely blank. Um, world, um, like gen seed, the RWG, uh, is a seed that declares map to load. If already generated, it will simply load it. Just leave as is, right? And then game world um, is up to you what you want to do here. You can have pre-gen or anything like that. I would say leave it as is. And a game difficulty all the way up to five. Um, how hard you want it. 
So that basically shows that that's the, the first set done. All right, so for, so for extended stuff, okay, now you've got your death penalties. So you've got no penalty, classic, injured, or permadeath. I would say probably leave it on classic XP penalty. The mesh layers, I would leave at a thousand. Max chunkage um, is, I would leave at minus one, but if you're not sure, it's the number of in-game days which must pass uh, visiting a chunk before it resets to its original state. If it's not revisited or protected, i.e. a land claim or a bed row across to me, it would caught will be gone so if you don't want like um, your bases disappearing leave it at minus one if you do want your bases to disappear after you've moved away set it to one okay i am um, allowing spawn near backpack so that's if like somebody dies they can go spawn next to their backpack when they die uh, dynamic which caught mesh enabled yes dynamic mesh land claim only um is when the only active player is in LCB areas. I would leave that on as well, unless you know what you're messing around with. Same for these basic settings here. You got the claim buffer, the mesh max item cache, how many items can be processed currently. Um, zombie speed, it's up to you if you want them to walk, run, sprint, or nightmare. I'd never want to be in a zombie movie like World War Z. So, or like uh, that's. The other one with, uh, they run at you. Oof, no thank you very much. Speaking of that, what's your favorite zombie movie? Leave a comment, I wanna know. I think my one has to be 30 days later. All right, so then you got like a zombie feral sense. Uh, here, I would say put that on for night, but it's up to you. Uh, then you've got your zombie move night. You can have them at sprint run all that. I would definitely have them at sprint, but if you want a more authentic zombie feel, you could just put them on like um, like a small jog, basically. So they're slower, but if you want a bit more crazy, or you can have them on nightmare mode. Uh, then fear mode, sprint, BW move, sprint, creative mode, I would say no because if you have that on, that means everybody can cheat and do what they want. Uh, the day length is 18 hours. The night length is 60 hours in game. So, uh, so it's like 60 minutes, real time in minutes. So whatever. Um, I would leave as is unless you want to mess around with it, make it longer or shorter. Um, web dashboard enabled only with the A21 plus. Um, I'm not actually sure what that does, but it's up to you if you want to leave the web, put that on or off, enable map rendering. Um, so rendering of the map to tile images while exploring it. This is used by the web dashboard to display view of view map. All right, okay, now I'll leave that off unless you know what you're doing. Then you've got your telnet stuff, field login attempts, login black lock times, um, the ACK or whatever you want to call it. Yes, leave on. Right, so next one is drop everything on death. Now, it's up to you if it's only the tool belt or only the backpack or nothing, or if it's hardcore mode, delete all. So for the purpose of this one, I'm going to go only in the backpack, so everything on my toolbar remains. Uh, drop on quit, nothing. Persistent player profiles, true. But if that's if you, like, so when somebody goes offline, okay, does their body remain in the world so they can be eaten or do they just disappear? Now, I like to let that is true. That way a player has to set themselves in a very defensive area. Uh, player safe zone levels, five, um, like if they are spawned in a safe zone without an opponent, right? Safe zone hours, how long it lasts for. Uh, enemy, the enemy difficulty, that would I would leave that as normal, but you can have it as feral if you want. How many max zombies will spawn? The loot abundance, the loot respawn days. I use I would actually change that one probably down to about a four or a five. The land claim count, the land claim size. Now these are just like um, how, like protected box around the claim blocks, so like when you're building a base, things like that. Uh, you can make your base like 
I think it goes up. If you're not sure the maximum amount, I always say put like a thousand in, and if it resets to like 30 or whatever, you know, it will go back to that. Um, or it will show you the cap amount. So I would say probably leave it between 30 and 50 on that one. Land claim expiry time, the number of days a player can be offline until his base expires. Now, I would put that at 30 because a lot of people have real lives, you know, and if you've got an ongoing server, 30 days is a good amount of time. So land key, uh, the land claim DK, uh, ugh, DK mode, can't speak today, controls the type of exploration for players who are offline. Now, I would just say leave it as linear. Then you've got all these base ones here, which are just your land claim online, land claim offline, your play modifiers, 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 holy D's. Um, I would leave them as four. Airdrop frequency, you can change that. You can have an airdrop marker. So player killing mode, right? I would say maybe kill strangers only. Um, if you don't want a PVP server, I would put it to no killing whatsoever. So I would put no killing for this server. So this one is a PVE server. Enemy spawn mode. Um, so you got max amount of animals spawned. Uh, blood moon enemy count moon warning so the time in games that the red day number begins on a blood moon day so you set this to minus one to never make red never show i would just leave it as eight the range uh so this is basically setting it to zero will make blood moons happen exactly on the ninth day um as specified you know or so like so yeah the eighth day or whatever blood moon frequency um and then the max uh, uncovered map chunks per player um if you don't know how to do change this one guys don't change it just leave as is because uh we messed around with this one on the last update and couldn't even see like anything it was it was bad uh server reserve slots so if you have like this will uh this one here how many slots you want to reserve so if you've got eight players that are in your clan and you always want to make sure that Eight of those slots are always for your clan. Put that to eight. And then their permission, uh, how many admin slots? I always say leave that to one. How many admin per slot permissions? One. Bedroll size, um, I'd leave that as 15. Hide command execution log. Uh, hide which caught from game clients. That way people can't see you editing stuff and all that kind of stuff if you're an admin uh party shared kill range is 100 multiply xp multiplier so if you want to increase how much xp is gained in the game put that up to whatever you want okay so for example it's at 100 right now i'm going to multiply that by 10 so i'm going to put it up to a thousand it's as you see as i said earlier on if you put too much in it will, it will do a uh, reset to the maximum amount so for that one i'll put it to 300 block damage player 100 at uh, block damage ai 100 true window enabled yes now uh this is the terminal window it won't you won't get an option to turn this off okay so that's like this the slash command input thing for windows um and then you got bedroll things like that and quest progression daily limit so you can change everything if you want. There is a little description under each one. It will help you out as much as it can. But if you're not sure, leave as is. Okay, and that, that will do for extended sentence. So far, that's that. Hit save. Okay, do not start your server yet. Next thing, file manager. And we can see here, this is all the files of the game. So if you have mods or anything like that you wish to enable, they will go in there if they're not in this list, which we'll get to in a second. Logs, this will show when the server is active, everything that's happening on the server. And then we've got mods. Now be please note that a lot of mods may not work with 1.0, right? So use them at your own risk. And if you have the EAC uh, enabled, the anti-cheat, um, in the basic settings thing like it says up there at the top you know it may cause your server to crash or have like issues and that so 
use the mods as you see fit. If you're not sure if a mod is not appealing there that you want, you could type it in. If it still doesn't appear and it's not on this list, you may have to upload it to the file manager, which would possibly cover in a different video. Next thing is server restarts. Now, I always say get your server restarts um, in. So you've got your daily restart or your weekly, monthly. Um, and I would usually say put that at like maybe 6 a.m. Uh, that way when there's nobody on and they're all in their beds. Then you've got your backups. Always create a backup in case something happens within the first day or two of your server. At least it's backed up. And then you can also do the restore right there. For permissions, you can also add, say, your friend as an admin of the server. So what you would do is you would get their username, their G portal username, and add it there. And then they can control it, um, the server, when you're not available. So it's just the server, nothing else on the account. If you have any problems at any time, you can contact the support team by clicking support and then just write a ticket and choose the category, the server, which I really should name them in different names, the title and the description, be as thorough as you can um, and they should be able to help you. So with that, once we've done everything there, hit the start button and that will start your server. I will do another video on how to join, find and join your server. So it cuts this, the length of this video down. In the meantime, guys, don't forget that you get 10% off in the description below. Um, have a great day and we'll see you all probably in another video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.